Welcome to my channel where we cover the lore of video games. We cover all kinds from the mainstream to the indie, so I hope you enjoy your stay, and welcome to the Chronicler of Lore. The city of New York now has two Spider-Men, but despite all of the superhero stuff that they do, they still have to live a normal life. Miles Morales is a senior in high school working on getting into college, and Peter Parker, who kind of didn't have a job after the whole Devil's Breath incident, just started as a teacher at Miles' school. Unfortunately, he doesn't get to even start the lesson before Miles calls him out of class because something bad has happened that will take both of them to deal with, and that big problem is Flint Marco also known as the Sandman. Peter has no idea what made Flint flash out, but he proves to be almost too much for both of them. But using a combination of Miles' electricity absorbing abilities and Peter's tech, they manage to beat him and get him locked away. But before he gets taken back to prison, he lets the Spider-Man know that things are gonna get really bad for them soon, because there's someone coming to the city and he's way more dangerous than the Sandman. That's a problem for another day though. For now, they have to clean up the mess that Sandman made. He knocked out the internet during his little rampage and buried a lot of people, not to mention the fact that since the criminals know that both Spider-Men will be busy doing rescue duty, they take the opportunity to do what they do best and that's steal stuff. After dealing with a host of minor problems, including carrying everyone's favorite Spider-Man hater J. Jonah Jameson to the hospital, Miles and Peter have to deal with a slightly less serious issue. Well, it's not serious for Miles, but it's pretty major for Peter. Both of them ran out of school. But while Miles would just get a write-up for what he did, Peter abandoned the students in a time of crisis, and for that he gets fired on his first day. That's one of the downsides of living a double life, and Genki points out that Miles is going to have that same problem in the not-too-distant future. While Miles gets ready to head off and do his own thing, Mary Jane is on her way to Peter's house to drop off a few things of her own, so he heads over there to meet her and tell her the great news that he got fired on his first day on the job. She feels bad for Peter, of course, but she might be joining him in the unemployment line soon if she doesn't get a good story on J. Jonah Jameson's desk in the next week. And since the book she wrote hasn't exactly been running off of the shelves, she's kind of stressing. In other words, both of them are having serious money troubles. Considering what the mortgage is on Peter's house, even if he hadn't lost his job, I'm pretty sure he wouldn't have been able to swing 4400 bucks a month. Not unless they pay teachers in New York a whole lot more in the comics than they do in the real world. After navigating the clutter of Aunt May's former house and reminiscing about some of the good old days, MJ gets a call saying that the RAF, New York's super secure prison for the most violent and dangerous criminals, is going to have a few prisoners move tomorrow. They haven't said who, so MJ, being the nosy reporter that she is, plans on leaving so she can do some digging and find out. She goes to head off, but her plans get interrupted by Harry Osborne, their closest friend, making a surprise appearance. He had supposedly been in Europe for a few years, but truthfully he was undergoing treatment in the city for the same disease that killed his mom. The good news is his treatment worked and he's fine now. Mary Jane hates the fact that she has to run off, but she makes Harry promise to have dinner with them tomorrow night. He's cool with that, but he has other plans for Peter. He takes Peter for a bike ride like they used to do, and while they ride, Peter tells his old friend all about what he's been doing without mentioning the Spider-Man stuff. Turns out Harry's plan for the two of them was to sneak into their old high school, something they had to do years ago to get the backup for their submission to the Young Entrepreneurs competition after Flash Thompson destroyed Harry's laptop. Harry wanted to relive that night because he managed to hide a gift inside of Peter's old locker. I have no idea how he pulled that off, and neither does Peter, but when you're super rich, you can do all kinds of weird stuff. The night they'd snuck into the school was the same night that Harry found out that his mother had died and he may have the same disease that killed her. That was 10 years ago, and since he survived, he wants to continue his mom's work to help make the world a better place, and he wants Peter to help him. The gift he gave him was a key card to his new lab, and he wants Peter to join him there as his partner. Peter doesn't know if he can add something so time-consuming to his already extremely busy superhero schedule, but he agrees to come and check the place out. That schedule is about to get a lot busier because Craven and his not-so-small army have made it to New York and whatever he's planning is going to be extremely bad considering the fact that he was responsible for the whole Sandman fiasco. 
The next morning, Peter calls Miles so he can join him at the raft to help with guarding whatever prisoner is getting moved. And since Miles is struggling with his college essay and his mom decides to let him know that she's been doing something that no teenage boy wants to hear about, that's dating, he's eager to do anything to clear his head so he swings off to meet Peter. The guards are moving Scorpion since for some reason they decided to put Sandman in the same cell with him and it didn't work out. It should be a simple job except for one little change. Scorpion's not the only prisoner that they're moving. They're also moving Martin Lee, the man known as Mr. Negative, and the same guy who killed Miles' dad. Miles really wants to kill the man, but he keeps his cool, which is good because as soon as they get the prisoners moving down river, a whole lot of cloaked boats and drones appear and start attacking. They are very well armed, very well trained, and neither the guards nor the Spider-Man have a clue who they are, but they seem to be after the Scorpion and Lee. They want them alive, but from the way they're attacking the ship, it really doesn't seem like they care if anyone survives. The ship starts to sink after some very large harpoons get shot into it. So while Peter tries to free the ship, Miles goes to save the drowning crew. He accidentally frees Scorpion and gets hit with his hallucinogenic poison in the process. But the stuff must not be all that potent because it wears off after a few minutes. But after getting thrown through the sinking ship, Miles finds Lee. The man is tied up in his cell and is filling up with water. For a not so brief moment, Miles strongly considers letting the man drown, but he changes his mind. Unfortunately, before he can break the man's cage door, his powers start to go haywire. The hunters pop in at just the right time to hook Lee's prison to their plane and pull it out of the boat. Miles has no intention of letting them take the man. Unfortunately, the destruction that the hunters cause is too much for Peter to stop on his own, so Miles has to choose between getting Lee and saving the people. He decides to put his revenge on hold for now and lets the man go so he can save lives. Since the hunters got what they wanted, they pull out, leaving behind millions of dollars in damage and a lot of injured people. Even though these mystery people have some serious firepower and two very dangerous men have been added to their army, Peter's pretty confident that he and Miles can stop them, but Miles is more worried about the changes in his own powers and about Lee. Between hunting that man down, finding out who this army is, and getting a hold of his new powers, both Miles and Peter are about to be very, very busy. And that's where we're going to stop for today. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to like, comment, share, and subscribe. Donate to the channel if you can, and I'll see you all next time.